But the thing you taught me was making your own garden fresh pizza sauce. And we're talking garden fresh. Garden fresh. That, that garden fire. fresh knowledge. You keep saying things like garden fresh. Like yeah. <laughs> awesome. I will. <laughs> That's garden fresh right there. That's garden <laughs> fresh, my friend. Oh, I really like the sauce. Garden fresh. <laughs> <laughs> If there's one thing <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Whew, there is nothing better in this world than a hot and fresh pizza straight out of the oven. But what if I told you you can GYOP, grow your own pizza in a single garden bed? My name is Kevin Espiritu from Epic Gardening here at my homestead in San Diego, California, doing a series with Food 52 on growing epic groceries. And to me, there is no more epic set of ingredients than those used to grow your own pizza. So in this video, I will show you exactly how to grow every one of these incredible ingredients and make your own garden fresh pizza. So come along with me as I show you just how to get some of these beauties started. Welcome to the epic greenhouse where I start a lot of my seeds. You can plant an individual seed and grow it out to a large plant. Or if you are more of a beginner in the gardening world, you can just buy what are called transplants or seedlings at the local nursery. So the choice is sort of up to you, but if you do want to flex your gardening muscle a little bit, I would recommend starting basil, tomatoes, and peppers in your pizza garden. You can use just about anything that can hold some soil to start your seeds. We have these cool little seed starting trays here. I'm just going to depress the soil a little bit. Seeds need darkness in general to germinate or sprout up and so you want to cover them up and I'm going to sprinkle about two or three seeds in each of these little holes here and that's just because I want to make sure that they sprout sometimes a seed won't do what you expect and so I just put a couple in as backup then I'll cover these over and a seed is a living thing it looks like basically a speck of dust, but it actually is alive. And so it gets a signal from the environment and that's how it knows when to sprout. It's nice and warm in this greenhouse, but it also needs a little bit of water. So I'm just going to hit it with a quick drink. Now, if you are starting these seeds, the timing can be tricky. Peppers grow a little slower than tomatoes. Basil grows a little faster than both. So if you're trying to time up the perfect pizza garden, I really recommend starting from seedlings that you can pick up just at a local nursery. Let's head out, out to the front yard and I'll show you what to do. Welcome to your future pizza bed, my friends. And when I say bed, this is a raised garden bed. So it's a fantastic and easy way to grow for beginners. This particular one is full of some awesome organic potting soil, which you can just get at a nursery. So let's start out with the humble tomato. Now, if you are a pizza sauce person, there is actually a specific type of tomato you can grow and it's called a Roma style tomato, kind of like a pear shaped tomato. So here we go. You've got your tomato start. A lot of people think that it's harmful to remove some roots or to move them all around at all. It's actually not. So it's, it's going to help the plant out if you just kind of rough this up just a little bit. One little tip on tomatoes when you're planting them out is you can snip off these lower leaves here. Tomatoes can produce roots on their entire stem. So if you bury them a little deeper than average, they'll actually produce roots out of this area as well. I might even take this one off too. You could use a trowel if you want. For me, I kind of like going in with my hands, giving it about a foot space from everything else in the raised bed. If you get really good organic potting soil, you don't even need to add any fertilizer into this. A tomato in. Next up we have Genovese basil, probably the most classic type for pizza. And this is a little secret. At the nursery, they'll sell you basil that looks like this. It's a little scary, but you can be somewhat rough and just tear this in half. And now I have two clumps of basil that I can use. So I like to space my basil kind of next to my tomatoes. There's some interesting benefits as a gardener for that. Some pests will be protected from by putting the basil next to the tomatoes. But you can mess around with all sorts of different types of basil. If you want to make a funkier pizza. And now we're going to move on to oregano. Not maybe necessary for pizza. I'm definitely more of a gardener than a chef. So you guys let me know what you like on your pizza or in your sauce. But for me, I do like it. So I'm doing this little herb 
segment here. I got my tomatoes, I got my herbs. Now I wanna move to onions, which I love on a pizza. The thing about these, and why I say don't start them from seed, just buy them like this, the bulbing process of an onion is heavily affected by where you live in the world, specifically how many hours of daylight it gets to in summer, which is super confusing. So I just say go to the nursery, grab them, and there's a fun hack here. The nursery will put a ton of onions into one little thing for four bucks, and so you can roll them between your hands, you can actually grab a hose and rinse the soil away, which seems crazy, it's also quite sloppy. I have just the onions and their roots, no soil, and that's because I'm going to very delicately separate these from each other and multiply the amount of onions that I can grow. So now we've taken a $4 onion from the nursery and turned it into about a dozen onions, which is fantastic. And this little white part here swells out to be either a giant white, yellow, or red onion. If I had planted them all together, they would have all run into one another and just not performed that well. Ideally, you want these roots to kind of be as they are, as if they were naturally growing in the ground, so just kind of jamming it in there is not a good idea. So I like to take my hand, pull a hole out, drop the onion in as naturally as you can, and then you'll firm up the soil around the onion. Like I mentioned, they grow out horizontally, so you don't want to put them right next to one another. Good rule of thumb is about four inches away. I just use my hand, so I'll go about there, over to my pinky, and that's a good spot for it. Our beautiful onions are in the ground, and I've almost used up two thirds of the bed, which is perfect because we're going in with peppers next. They can be split roughly into hot or sweet peppers, so that's dealer's choice, whatever you like on your pizza. This one's called a New Mexico pepper. When you pull them out of the pot, you might find it looks like the pot. It's called root bound, which means that the roots have kind of spiraled around in their container, but they're gonna go into a much larger container, this raised bed, and so what you wanna do here, you can kind of just take your thumbs and break the soil up, and if you break a few roots, it's actually fine. You just want to let these roots know that they have the freedom to spread out in their new home. Maybe put them about a foot apart into your bed. You don't have to bury the peppers deep like tomatoes. You can just match it with the soil. Let's get this last pepper in the ground. And I wanna show you our final one. This is extra credit if you dare to grow this because it's a little bit tricky, and that would be garlic. Every single thing you see in front of you in this bed, you can just plant it at the same time no matter where you live in spring when most plants want to grow. But garlic breaks the rules, and that's because garlic wants to be planted the season before. Almost everywhere in the country, it's November. The magic of this, though, is that there is no seed to plant garlic. You just plant a clove. It's got that papery skin on it. You wanna leave that skin on, go down into the soil about three, four inches. In goes the garlic clove, pointy side up, cover that up, and you'll wanna do this in fall, the year prior, it takes about half a year to grow, which is why it's extra credit, because you can buy it at the store, no problem, but it is one of the more satisfying things in the garden that I've ever grown. Our pizza bed is planted. Super important step here is to water your plants in. The most important way to stave off what's called transplant shock. Basically the plant's saying, hey, where am I? This makes no sense. I was used to a different way of living. See, the beauty of the pizza garden is that all of these plants kind of want the same growing conditions. They want a good amount of light, six to eight hours a day, a healthy amount of water, maybe two, three times a week. And besides that, you're pretty much good to go. Timing wise, let's say I planted this in mid spring, like I mentioned, you should start getting pizza ingredients somewhere around summer, late summer. I do want to show you some plants a little further on. So let's check out the rest of my garden. Here we are in my massive onion bed. These things are easily the biggest ones I've ever grown. Planted them about four or five months ago. Normally an onion's in the ground, kind of like this. If you see that neck flop or break, you know that it is ready to go. So this one was, that's why I pulled it out. This will be in our pizza pretty soon. Here we have a more mature little herb garden. So some Genovese basil here, a different variety here, and then hiding behind we have the oregano, as long as you give it enough water and light, you're good to go. But I will show you a harvesting tip. So here on this Genovese basil, you know, I could come through and cut off this little bottom piece, but I would have really hampered the plant's ability to continue growing. So what I wanna do is cut right above what's called a growth node, where you see some leaves shooting out. So instead of harvesting, you know, right in the middle like this, I'll harvest right here. And now what'll happen as this plant grows is these two side shoots will become the new main shoots will get nice 
and bushy. With the oregano, you don't have to be as precious. It's more of a mounding or spreading style plant, so you can just grab as much as you need and snip it as you please. This is my much more mature pepper bed. Chickens are howling in the background. They probably want a little bit of a snack. This is butter. But with peppers, as they mature, one of the biggest tips I can give you is to just take a simple bamboo steak and stuff it into the ground right next to the stem and then just tie it up. You don't want them falling over on you. But I have a couple jalapenos here. So when you're harvesting any pepper, you wanna snip a little bit above where the pepper actually ends on this chunk of stem here. And now we just need some tomatoes. So this is what a tomato might look like as it matures throughout the year. This one is vining upwards, and that is a tomato type. There's a vining style like this. There's also a bushing style like the one you saw me plant in our pizza garden. If you wanna keep things easy, just go with a bushing type. But how do I know this tomato is ripe and ready? Certainly these green ones are not, but this one down here is looking nice and red. When it looks about half ripe, the flavor is actually fully locked. So we have everything we need with these tomatoes. Let's go ahead and make our Garden Fresh Pizza. Congratulations, my friends. You have achieved the GYOP, Grow Your Own Pizza. Pizza's always better with friends. So I wanna introduce you to Jacques on the Epic Gardening team who bakes his own sourdough. And I got it right here. Oh, look at this, look at this. Do you know how to make pizza sauce and you're watching this? Please forgive us our sins. We're doing it our own way. I just kind of chop up the Romas. And the reason why you grow Romas for sauce is because of how fleshy they are. It is also quite nice to grow. I tend to really not have a lot of issues with them when I grow. Yeah, I agree. When you're cooking a pizza super, super hot like we're about to, you actually don't need this sauce to be fully cooked. It'll cook the second we toss it in there. There's nothing wrong with a fresh tomato sauce. Honestly, it's got an interesting color. Just sort of <laughs> orange. <laughs> I think it's just the air that's whipped in. Let it kind of degas. Check out some of Food 52's more professional pizza <laughs> recipes with the peppers in the garden. There's so many different varieties, like dozens and dozens, and you can put every single one of them on pizza. Beautiful onion. Cooking in the garden. Composting in the garden. Doesn't matter. What's crazy about this is every single one of these things, obviously you could buy at the grocery store, but why would you? Because the tomatoes are way better. People just can't buy this produce. It's no, your own. It's unique I mean, an expression of your garden. My favorite ingredient this year is zucchini. Interesting. I, I like to roast it with some olive oil and garlic. It's super creamy, really works well with the cheese, the tomato sauce, delicious. So cultivate that like button, my friends. Tell us what your most controversial pizza topping is. Anchovies, pineapple, maybe together. Like, they're actually pretty good to me. Pizza looking pretty good, if you ask me. I have a little fun little gadget here. That looks really cool. The pizza scissor. Cheers. That's really good. You know it's gonna taste good when it comes out of the garden like this. I might even be getting tricked to think it tastes better, but I grew all this stuff. It is so fresh, it is so good. I can see the crew, they want some pizza. We're gonna make a few more. This has been Kevin and Jacques from Epic Gardening, showing you how to grow Epic groceries. Good luck in the garden, and keep on growing.